OK, here it is, part two. So we're going to look at Judges chapter two, verse one. And it says, Vav Yod Ayan Lamed, Yal, Yael. Hey, that's like that lady who put the uh, the Vav, the tent stake, through Sisera's temple. The uh, commander of the enemy forces when there was a big conflict. It means efficient, effective, be of use, benefit, or profitable. And then here's this word malak, angel, memlam and aleph kaf, hyphen with Yahweh, memnun, hyphen with hey gimelamid gimelamid, ha gal gal. Then aleph lamid, hyphen to ha bakim. Vayamer saying, Aleph, I and Lamed, hey, I lift up or I went up, Aleph, Tav, Kaf, Mem, with you all, Ma, Mitzrayim, from Mitzrayim, Vav, Aleph, Bet, Yod, Aleph, and entered Aleph, Tav, Kaf, Mem, with you, Al, Ha, Eretz, toward the land, Asher, Nun, Shin, Bet, I and Tav, Yod, Tav, Yod, I did, Nun, Engage the action, shin bet ayin, that's the word seven, or vow, unto, lamed, aleph bet tav, yod kaf mem, your fathers. Hey, this is Father's Day. Here, we're reading about this promise that this angel of Yahweh, Yahuwah's messenger, we'll look at that in a moment. He said, listen, I got up with you And I brought you out of Egypt and entering the land as I did swear to your forefathers. Was this Yahweh speaking or is this the angel speaking? This is the same kind of problem we had at Exodus, Exodus 3 at the burning bush. In the Hebrew, it jumps around. So in the English syntax, you know, either there's a message or a messenger, and it's either a messenger on and you can't sit there and jump around and keep switching who's doing the talking, but yet that's what's done all the time. So you don't know whether it's a message, a messenger, or whether it's Yahweh himself giving the message. Kind of sort of as a messenger speaking first person as if it was him when it's not. And the reason it's confusing is because that's the way it's written in Hebrew and it's very confusing. So then that's where people have to make up doctrines and pretend it's the pre-incarnate Christ or some other angel or this or that. And it's like, just so you know, people try to make sense of these things, but it's not clear. Just so you know how it's written. But carrying on with this verse one, it says, Vayamer, what did he say to our forefathers? This is what he's saying. Lo, that's Lamed Aleph, means no negative. Aleph, pay resh, Ephraim. Well, that's like Ephraim. That's the first three letters of the word Ephraim. Britty. Bet Resh, there's that word again, pure and clean. Yod Tav Yod, that's my covenant, my Brit. Do not Aleph Pei Resh, my covenant, Aleph Tav Kaf Mem would be with you forever. So back up. What it says is, do not make a covenant with the people that live in the land ever, ever. Do not make any kind of covenant deal with the people in the land ever. Then the next verse too, Vetam lo ta karato brit la ishuvi ha aretz ha zat me zavachotiham ta ta zon velo Shamatem Bekoli Mazat Ashitam. Okay, he's saying, I said, do not write a treaty, a covenant with the inhabitants of this land. And it says, at their feasts, at their altars. Mem Zion Bethet. The suffix is Vavtav, that's plural. Yod He Mem means there, T H E I R. Don't go to their feasts. Don't eat 
dinner with them. Don't worship at their altars. You were commanded. That's tov tov zadivav noon. Zadivav is the operative verb. You were commanded. Do not do it. But your fathers, they did not listen. Lo shamatam to my voice. And then it says mazat ashitam. Mazat, what's this? What is this you're doing? Okay, so you go back to verse 2, chapter 2, verse 1. The angel of Yahweh, Memnun Hagalgal. Well, Gilgal means uncover, made known, revealed, discover, taken into exile, metamorphosis, a gear wheel. Gimel is a shape like this, you know, in the paleo. And the Lamed shaped underneath, it's a, uh, it's kind of like the yin-yang symbol. It's a revolving door. It's where you get the word Goliath or head or Golgotha, the head that rolls, the rolling stone. It's, it's to roll like a ball down a hill. Gimel Lamed Hay is the dome-shaped capital, like a, the, a capital rotunda. The dome-shaped capital of a cane. The message, Mem Lamed Aleph Kaf. Kaf suffix means you or yours. Mem is the object. Lamed Aleph is the word no. But Lamed Aleph Kaf means to send. So it's translated angel or messenger. But he says, listen, Yahweh, Yahuwah told us what not to do. He gave us the message that it would be effective of useful benefit and profitable. Do not make a treaty with the people of the land. Why? Because they're going to deceive you. Don't go to their festivals. Why? Because they're going to deceive you. And he made known. Memnun is to what? From where? Memnun. From in your heart of listening to Yahweh's words, why did he say to Israel, you will keep these Moedim and you will teach your children the family history. You were slaves in Egypt. He took you out with a strong hand. There's those seven verbs that we were talking about last week. He's going to melt. These are the seven words. He's going to melt them away just with the presence of his name. He's going to give us words, the Hebrew language. He's going to say, prove you love me. Take these words into your heart and let them grow within you. He's going to give us this menorah as an ensign of war and say, Ishmaelacha, man of war is Yahuwah. He's not some little having a tea party. He's a man of war. He's a shield and a sword of devastation. Balance scales of justice. Everything you do is going to come back. If you don't do what I say, it's coming back on you. If you do what I say, that's coming back on you for blessing, for curse. Make sure you realize this is the asher, the truth of the world, the universe, the cosmology of this entire universe is built according to this. And then realize once we've been lied to and it plays out, we realize Something's missing. He's going to put that testimony somehow within us. We have been lied to. Something's wrong. Something's missing. What is it? What is it? What is it? That's right. He said something, and we were told it doesn't matter. He were told it was done away with. We were told his words were of a long lost covenant a long time ago to a failed people who are going to burn in hell. It has nothing to do with us. The whole thing's a damn dirty lie. And then what we are to expect in front of us is a spectacular exhibition of the return of his favor to we, his people, in this generation as we return to his words. All right. They did not listen to my voice. And now what is this that they're doing? That's two uh, Judges chapter 2. Verse 2. 
And then if we look at the, um, the last couple verses here, verse three, gimel mem. Okay, there's that reciprocal word, gum, back at you. This is that yoke, that tether. I commanded, as I said, Aleph Gimel Rashin, I will not drive away, expel, export, or divorce them from your face. And then here's the upshot of what's going to happen, the tail end of verse three of uh, Judges. Vav, hey, yod, vav. And it'll be for you, Lamed, Zadi, Dalet, Yod, Mem. Well, Yod, Mem's the plural. Lamed is the prefix. Zadi, Dalet. It means Zad. Hey, like Zadik. Yeah, Zadi, Dalet, Kuf. But Zadi, Dalet means lion weight, ambush, sabotage, malicious intent, devastate, lateral, sideways, beguile, broadside. You're in a battleship and you pull up alongside another ship and you got the full broadside cannon fire. It's 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 absolutely devastating. It's a war tactic. It's not the straight. That means it's satanic. Add to subtract, veer right, veer left. Zadi Dalit Dalit also means incidental, unimportant flank to flank. Um, Another army is a basic military maneuver. You get around behind them to their side. The other, the other side is going to be defeated. Probably. The flanking move is to make us think that Yahweh's words are incidental and unimportant and done away with. He has a different people group. He doesn't love Israel anymore. Now he loves the church. What's the difference? Oh, Israel's told they had to obey his words. The church doesn't have to obey anything because they believe in Jesus. Believe that story? Was that what he told our forefathers? He said, if we are brought, Deuteronomy 13, a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and they try to convince us of some theological doctrine which is different than what our fathers would recognize. It's a satanic deception. It's a trick from Yahweh himself to see whether we will quickly and easily stray from the path. He told us that he taught our forefathers and taught them to teach us, handed down through the generations, bringing us to where we are at today, The next words here, yod hey yod vav that's existing for you. The last word of Judges 2, verse 3 says, Lamed mem vav kuf shin. Kuf shin, similar to kuf yod shin and kuf vav shin. I think we talked about that last week also. It's the word for straw, stubble, chaff. It's rebar you put in concrete. It's make something durable, hard severe difficulties kufshin hey severe cruel fierce violent difficult to understand memvav kufshin then is unintelligible if you listen to these guys words and worship at their, their ceremonies and festivals and sing their worship songs Yahweh's words will become unintelligible and difficult to understand, and you're going to be swept along with their lies, distortions, ambush, sabotage. Interesting, this is kufshin. So you look in the dictionary for kufshin and kufshin bet. Well, hey, kufshin bet. There's the benefit of looking at Klein's dictionary because your eyes just look at the other words. Shin bet is the word like Shabbat because the Tav is a suffix that just sh Shabbat, sh return, dwell, repent. Come back. To what? Kufshin bet. To the difficult of what? The, the Kufshin bet means incline one's ears to listen. Attentive and obey. It's a synonym with the word Shema. If you return to sit and listen to Yahuwah's instructions, 
It is the antidote to break the power of the spell of the satanic enchantment of that fourth beast who was allowed to destroy Israel. And then those four horns that we were talking about in Zechariah 2 verse 1 or Zechariah 1 verse 18, depending on how your your book breaks the chapter there in Zechariah. The Harash, the Harashim are coming, the four craftsmen, carpenters, are coming to terrify the horns of the nations. Harashim. So we talked about that. Was, I wrote up that article, Trouble with Christmas. The word harash means silent, deaf, mute, to plow, to cut into, engrave. It's a worker in pottery, wood, or metal. It's dark, sylvan, thick, deep woods. It's also like words of witchcraft. What does this all mean? Unintelligible, silent, deaf words that are carved into wood, metal, or pottery. It sure looks to me like what it's saying is Paleo Hebrew letters. The one language that people think was lost has no meaning. And yet it's creepy, scary, like the words from Mount Ebal. Are, 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 cursed, 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 cursed by El Yahu. You will certainly die cursed, 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 cursed. Those, those words they found in that little piece of metal. That's the same thing Yahweh said in the Garden of Eden to Adam. That's the same thing he said when they're going into the promised land. That's the same thing when they get off the ark. You will not eat the blood of animals. When you kill an animal to eat it, pour its blood on the ground. And so what do people have? Blood soup. Oh yeah, great. Okay, we'll do everything Yahweh said to revel in the fact we have no law. Who do you think is lying to you? And what did Moshe say? When these words were made known to the people of Israel, they wept. That's the word. This is the word of uh, Judges 2 verse 4. When these matters were made known to the people, they wept. Bet, cough, buck, bucky. And they named the place Bakim, weeping. And there they sacrificed unto Yahuwah. First word of chapter of uh, Judges chapter 2, verse 5 says, Vav Yod Kufresh Alephav, Kara. They called there the place the weeping. But the word Kufresh Aleph is to learn how to read. We've talked about this before. That was the first word, Vaikra, in the book of Leviticus. When you learn how to read and you go back to where Gilgal, he makes known to us the message, the messenger, the message sent when you learn how to read, as he said, this is why world history is what it is. This is why the generations of your people group, Israel, instead of being preeminent, gaon, majestic excellence, it's been holocausted and inquisitioned and pogromed and dragged through the streets and despised and hated and rejected. Kind of sounds like the Jesus story. When we turn our ear from listening to Yahweh's instructions and doing them, it empowers our enemies to lie, to change our heart, to change the seed of Yahweh's identity and the life that's in his word becomes genetically modified. We take on different ceremonies, customs, traditions, feasts, and Yahweh's reality becomes unrecognizable our enemies overwhelm us. And then you read through the rest of the book of Judges, the next two dozen chapters. Every time the people of Israel, a generation arose who didn't remember what Yahweh did with their forefathers in Egypt because they wouldn't tell the story. They wouldn't have Pesach where they sat and told the meal and ate unleavened bread. And they didn't tell 
the next generation who Yahweh was and what wonderful things. And so the that he had given them as a specific Segula people group, and they learned the ways of their neighbors. They learned the ways of other Elohim. They learned the ways of other nations and cultures and families, anything but Yahweh, and drip by drip. And I say the word drip because it's the word taper, which is the word for fingernail of enchantment, and it's also the word to Brazil iron to cause the leak, reduce the price, cheapen, grow lean, Drip by drip. We become intimidated. We become kebab, roasted meat on skewers. And the kingdom is lost. But we stand right now at the threshold of pulling it all back together. This isn't necessarily the end of the world where everything comes to crashing ruin. We might be at the threshold if we, the people of Yahweh, remember what he said to Solomon. If, that's conditional, my people who are called by my name. Last I looked, that's neither the Christians nor the Jews. They refuse to call on his name. Will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and confess their sin. That's all who do. And walk in my ways and listen to my voice. Then I will hear from heaven and heal their land and restore his favor to us as his people. You will be my people and I will be your Elohim. So for me to choose to take on that as his identity. It means I'm yoked. I'm participating in his vision. Ehye, Asher, Ehye. Gum, then, in which case, the reciprocal action is his dream, his vision becomes our reality. That's where we stand. That's what's in front of us. But our enemies will lie to us. Fake news, fake history, fake science, fake medicine. Fake reports of war, fake reports of what astounding things their weapons will do. Yahweh will confound even their smart bombs, even their intelligence. Yahuwah will stupefy and bring confusion and drive them mad and take every tactic that they stand up he will use for them to fall into the pit of their own destruction. David wrote about that. All we have to do is read the accounts, and he tells us again and again. And it's our memming, our taking to heart his identity in his words and his relationship yoked with his people. And if we hang on to that, and this simply do what he said as if it was the catalyst for everything to happen, just like he said. Sit down on the seventh day, regard as Moedim. Give Hodu to the name of Yahuwah. Betoch trust with hope. And Don't eat what he said not to eat because that'll abominate you. Pretty simple formula. Thank you, Yah, for giving the truth to our forefathers. Giving the truth back to us. At a time like this, right now, today. Thank you that your words are true. Thank you, we can trust your words. Thank you for telling us again, reminding us that our enemies are liars. Every word out of their mouth is a deception. We don't have to listen to a bit of it. And the simple thing is, as soon as they tell us not to do what you said, we know that they're the liar. Thank you for making it so simple and clear. The word for, in uh, Judges 2 verse 2, the word for cutting a covenant is spelled tav, kaf, resh, tav, vav, ta, karat, karati, karat. 
Hey, Kaf Resh Hey means to know, to recognize. Hakir, Hey, Kaf Yod Resh, mark, sign, insignia. Synonym with Aleph Vav Tav, letter of the alphabet. Nun Kaf Resh, these are all derivatives of Kaf Resh. Treat as a stranger, foreign, Gentile, hostile, alienated, approve of, ascertain, calamity, misfortune. What's this saying? He says, do not approve of their culture in covenant treaty as if it was pure and clean. Keep yourself distant, keep yourself alien from them. I thought we were all supposed to get along. It's it's the it's the tactic of the battle plan right here. Last thing I'll uh, address that word affair that I said it was the first three letters of the word Ephraim. Lo affair briti. Do not ever make a covenant with them. That word Aleph pay resh. Pay resh. Aleph could be the prefix letter meaning I will. Pay resh is the word for fruitful. It's the word for bull. Aleph pay resh in Klein's dictionary means pasture. Marsh, ashes, incinerate, dust, cosmetic, foam of the sea, bandage, mask, headgear. But then he elaborates on the word and says it's the root of the word Aphrodite, goddess of love, Greek and Roman. And it became the word for our month of April, APR. This is Aleph Pei Resh, Apri. And it has to do with. Ishtar, the Canaanite goddess of fertility, hence Aphrodite, hence Venus. What does that mean? I told your forefathers, do not mess with Ishtar and Aphrodite, the fertility goddesses, the beautiful cosmetic of the nations around you. So why do we celebrate Easter? Well, Jesus rose from the dead. It had to do with Pesach, Chag HaMatzot, and Shavuot. Soon as we change it to Easter, to Ishtar, to the fertility goddess, to the egg laying rabbit, to the blood red eggs, to the pastel colored eggs, it's not Yahuwah anymore. It's not his. Briti. Pure and clean. At come forever. He has given us. By looking at these words. And taking it to heart. Memming within each of us individually. He has given us the way to conquer. The giants of the land. And it's not with human armed aggression. That stone that hits the feet of the statue, not with human armed aggression. It's translated, not carved with human hands. Different way to read it. The point is, this entire conflict, we are staging the military action by simply taking his words to heart and being his people as he said he wanted all along. We must regard the culture around us as foreign and alien for the sake of focusing our attention on what did he say and how do we do it? And then we bump into little problems like how do you keep the Sabbath day and where do you go to recalendar? That's step two. We'll deal with that later. Anyway, uh, open the conversation back up to you all. You can go ahead and turn on your mics and uh, cameras and take it from here. Can you hear me? We are. There you go. We just we are. <laughs> we just are shy. I can't tell who's talking. The voices are kind of jumbled, but go ahead. And if you want to uh, say something about the subject or some whatever, go ahead. Well, uh, hi, Rick, it's Guylaine. Um, as, <laughs> as you were talking, um, 
I kept thinking about Pesach. You know, it's all about the cleaning of our house, the uh, not to have the leaven. And, um, you know, when we uh, talk about faith, uh, many times in, in the society, it seems like this magical power of my deep thoughts creating that energy that I can do miracles. But what I see faith is knowledge. You know, when you were talking about the valley and the word deep, yeah. um, it really I mean, struck me how it's about the, the this pure knowledge of who Yahweh is and what he says. You know, in the depth of our mind, Amuna, there's this man in the word faith, Amuna. And this is what I ponder upon who he is. And I believe this is why it is so important for us to clean the house in the sense that, you know, to revisit all of our beliefs and make sure it's aligned with the scripture. And we have this Mishkan pattern as a plumb line to make sure everything is rightly al aligned so we can win this war right now. I, I would I would agree. That's uh, well said. Is there anybody else there on the call that wants to say something? Yeah, this is Carla. So I'm just very thankful to ya, um, because as you were saying earlier, like it makes me think about everything in a different aspect. Um, you know, when you ask that question, how many of whom, <laughs> right? It's like we are, we are that that we are the answer to that question. Like if we now and we we have the opportunity to tilt the scales you know and we have the gift of hindsight we have a lot more information we can as believers we can do so much right now for the kingdom so i praise abba for that information and i ask that he would fill us with amuna like sister was saying so that we can have the courage to do so you know what you you said there uh someone wrote me a note a couple weeks ago and said that her father on his deathbed told her she was absolutely worthless to the kingdom of heaven because of her belief in these matters what a rotten horrible stupid thing for some man to say to his daughter and it was nothing but lies but he couldn't see he was blind Apparently, he was ignorant, obviously. Exactly the opposite is true. I absolutely believe that anybody who will take Yahweh at his word and believe them are the only ones that have impact for the kingdom of heaven. And for that father to have been so completely deluded by the established church that he would lie to his daughter thinking he was telling her the truth is a disgusting travesty. For Yahuwah to make these words clear to us and then I believe he is absolutely pleased to see us take these words within ourselves as, a, as being pregnant with them and rejecting the institution of corruption and satanic lies that he has allowed to perpetuate for 2,000 years now on the face of the earth. Because mm -hmm. our forefathers willingly rejected the truth. And I would commend every one of the people listening to this and taking it to heart, as Gilin said and as Carla just said. Good on you, Julie. Hallelujah. So we, I asked, uh, I texted you last week about Doll of Eyes because we discussed it on Wednesday. Okay. Or Thursday night. Anyway, um, two Thursday nights ago. Leah had dull eyes, but Rachel was shapely and beautiful. Like if you're taking an SAT test and looking for synonyms, those aren't, <laughs> like, which one do you pick? It's weird. Like, how are they related? I don't understand. So, would you, did you have a chance to look that up? I haven't got a chance to deal with that yet. No. Mm. Okay. I'll, 
I'll see if I can look at it this week. You know, one of the things that I kind of wish we would start doing, though, is when we call out Christianity, that we'd also call out other religions, too. Because they're not, none of them are right. They're well, all, they're all wrong. Right. I'm just, I'm just dealing with uh, what I was uh, personally familiar with for yeah. a long time. Yeah. And still pervasive amongst us in North America. I guess it doesn't really matter what you title the religion. If it's a religion, it's wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong. Well, that's why I've tried to stop even using the phrase, you know, the, the, the church and just talk about uh, an institution or an organization or an ideological construct. You know, like uh, if there's a kingdom, so we're going to the kingdom. That's, that's the goal, right? We're going to get to the kingdom that Yahoo is running to his kingdom. Um, what what kingdom on earth has, or anywhere really, has no laws? It's just anarchy rules. It's, it just doesn't work, right? Even the uh, even those uh, people that have the upside down A in a circle, the anarchists of the United States, they've got laws too. <laughs> when, it's, they, uh, yeah. when they come and tear apart places like Portland and Seattle and a few other cities they have their own little uh, rules of engagement hey i think my friends are about to leave and i need to have a conversation with them i'm going to have to get out of here i'm going to pray father thank you for our chance together thank you for everybody on the call uh thank you for father's day thank you for men who are willing to lead their family father send some more in whose name i pray amen amen, amen. thank you eric thank you very much shalom oh, shalom Hallelujah. shalom Thank you, Eric. Okay, thanks. Just a minute.